Praise the Lord, precious saints, and welcome to another daily prophetic message to start your day. And today is day three, precious saints, day three of us fasting and seeking the Lord. And as we're going through the book of John, we're on chapter three. And in particular, we are concentrating on the the chapter three, which also talks about Nicodemus. And when Nicodemus met with Jesus, uh, you know, Nicodemus asked this question and then he was responded to by Jesus and said, you must be born again to enter the kingdom of God, precious saints. Well, I just want us to turn to 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. Do you not know yourself that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. So coming back to the question of being born again, we have to ask ourselves this question also. Have we been born of the Spirit? What evidence do we have of this new birth? Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? Do we have the evidence of Christ in our life? Are we born again? Are those old behaviors, are they starting to leave us? It doesn't mean automatically that you are transformed and you are no longer do those old things. But no, there's a, there's a sanctification process. There's a sanctification process by the power of the Holy Spirit that comes and removes those things from our life. But this is in relation to revival because we're looking at also within today's revival thoughts, we're also looking at the attributes for revival. And we want to see a revival within our lives. And whenever we see uh, a larger group of people that normally starts off with a small group. Now, you know, there, there is a story of a revival within the, within the Aboriginal communities of Queensland and also an island off Queensland here uh, in Australia in the 90s. And there was a revival of one particular guy that fasted for 40 days. And during that 40 days, he found out that on this particular island, there was a missionary that died on that island. He became a martyr for Christ on that island. So then the guy went and uh, further fasted for an extra seven days over that particular area where that martyr died. Now, as he was fasting and praying, there was a spiritual battle that took place that he was coming against in the heavenlies. Uh, against this spiritual thing and on this particular place it was very difficult meaning there was a lot of alcohol abuse there was a lot of um, uh, domestic abuse within this community of these indigenous aboriginal people and after this particular time of prayer and fasting that this this man was this servant of God was seeking the Lord there was a breakthrough and where there was a meeting of maybe only five people would come to any type of church meeting, there was an you know an antichrist spirit that had been uh, developed there, thinking that you know the the gospel was a white man's gospel, opposed to you know Jesus came to die for all. So under this power of this five people, all of a sudden people started to gather, people started to come and repent and be convicted of their sins because this person, the servant of God, sought the Lord as a leading of the Holy Spirit to fast for 40 days and then to fast for a further seven days over this area where the martyr had been killed. And then all of a sudden there was a breakthrough, there was revival and over the half of the population got saved in this particular area, in this community. Even the police officer who was a white man came and he got saved um, at a later point from seeing the change and the alcohol consumption reduced dramatically. Even the trading hours of the hotel closed early because the people were going to revival meetings. There was a stirring of the Holy Spirit. There was deliverance. There was healing. There was cripples walking. There was all sorts of change, domestic violence change, where they had a a refuge for women because of domestic violence. There was only one person left until there were none left in that particular refuge because the domestic violence changed. People changed. People got married that were living in, uh, you know, um, just habitating together, but not married. People were getting married and, and all sorts of stuff came to change the environment of the community. Because why? 
there was a conviction to their lost a conviction to their lost condition many repented of their sins and placed their trust in Jesus Christ and many revivals have started with a small group of people that also came under the same conviction because somebody prayed precious saints we should never underestimate the prayers and the fasting programs that you are joining in to see a change within our communities, within our families. But it must start with us first, precious saints. It must also start with us first. Hallelujah. See, this has driven a few to pray and fast and cry out to God and also to be filled with the Holy Spirit. As we pray, as we fast, we're also praying for a change within our communities a change within our nations, a change within our cities, a change within our churches and so forth. And God is calling us to cry out to Him. Imagine this, all those people, they confessed and repented of their sins and their impurities in their lives that quenched the Holy Spirit's work in them and through them. And as God began to reveal His power to change lives, the gospel began to spread and revival and awakening began within the, all the indigenous communities surrounding because of one person decided to fast and pray. Precious saints, when we learn to pray and fast, when revival comes, let me tell you, it becomes easy. It becomes easier when we're trying to do the ministry without the full working of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, it can become weary. You can become discouraged because without revival, people can also put on masks in your church. They can become, they can become, you know, um, hypocrites within your church. But when true revival comes, it brings a conviction. It's a move of God to transform and change the hearts of even the hardest of sinners with in communities they come running to the altar and want to change and so do we need that type of revival that starts with you that starts with me that also starts within our families and so forth we need to bring that prayer altar back in the house of God now I know when I say the word prayer altar a lot of it has a connotation to evil altars or family altars but God wants to restore that altar what is that altar that altar is Jesus Christ and him crucified but it's your prayer it's bringing prayer back into your house prayer back into your lifestyle as we've said yesterday as devotion doesn't just become a, a, a particular part time set apart Heart, but rather your life becomes a life of devotion when we allow prayer to come back into our houses, prayer before meals, prayers with our families, devotion with the Word of God in our personal life, with our children, with our marriages, with our spouses and so forth. God will start to bring revival and change within our lives precious saints and just like Elijah he restored the altar of Jehovah on Mount Carmel and so we need to rebuild the altar once again within our homes so that the fire of revival may receive the sacrifice and change for our destinies precious saints Never underestimate your prayer and your fasting for your prodigal children, for your prodigal spouses, for your prodigal siblings, for your prodigal even parents, whatever that situation is, whoever you're praying for, don't underestimate the power of prayer and fasting. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, God can bring revival and change to your situation. Somebody say amen. So family devotion should be something to look forward to, not something to dread. First, to be effective and successful Successful devotions do not have to be long, precious saints, but rather short and concise with the prompting and the leadings of the Holy Spirit to whatever age group you're trying to minister to, make it effective that they can also get involved and allow the Spirit to move within your homes, within your communities, whatever area. But precious saints, we need the help of the Holy Spirit. And that is why we need revival in this hour. Somebody say Amen. Every revival is a Bible revival. Somebody say that. Every revival is a Bible revival. When we have a revival of the Spirit without the revival of the Word, let me tell you that actual revival can go off in error. Whenever we have the Word without the Spirit, then it's not going to allow anything to happen. It's just going to become 
and dead religion. But when we have a revival, every genuine revival is a revival, is a Bible revival, precious saints. Just as it was as Nehemiah in the book of Nehemiah, we see that there was a change. There was a change because the Word of God was restored in the place and the people wept and cried because the Word of God was restored and the people were revived once again with the words that were living words, precious saints. Just as it was in that indigenous community, they received Christ. They received the words of life that things change, peoples change, people's hearts change and so can God change your community. He can change your heart also as you desire more of God. Somebody say, hey, Amen. See, a revived home consists of individuals who consistently walk in the light with the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. It's daily cleansing, daily emptying, daily filling, daily renewal uh, and, and redirection through the Word is the only way to abide in the true vine. He is the true vine and we are the branches, precious saints. And whatever area needs to be cut off, allow the Father to prune off during this time as you're seeking God and you're saying, God, I want more of you. I want more of your revival. I want more of your spirit in this hour. Whatever you're doing in this hour, don't do it without me. Don't pass me by. I want to be revived. I want to see my community change. Despite of what's going on around you, despite of the elite's uh, plan and agenda to bring control in a one world uh, uh, government, one world religion, God, we know that Jesus Christ is the answer. He is the way, the truth and the life. And we've got to preach the truth in this hour while there is still time because revival is here now. While Christ, the hope of all glory, lives within us, He is the hope of all nations and God wants to use you to bring that revival around you. Never underestimate what God can do through you, precious saints. Revival begins at the home, precious saints. And revival can begin in your home also now. Perhaps it would be a good idea to call the family together and also to get an honest session. Hallelujah. Confess failures, share concerns and get the air cleared. God, on, Go on record that by God's grace, you will live a life characterized by what? By Christ, by everything that He has, by everything that He wants you to do, precious saints. Do whatever it means, whatever it takes, because revival is here. Revival is here. It starts with you and me, His Holy Spirit that dwells within us. We are temples of the Holy Spirit, precious saints, and He wants us to be holy. He wants us to be set apart. He wants us to be used for His glory. Do you desire more of Him today? Do you desire for Him within this 21 days of fasting, precious saints? This is just day three, and we're just pressing in. We're pressing in to see God move. We're pressing in to see more of God, and God wants to do something great within your life oh Lord maybe it's time for us to ask these questions ask God to reveal to you the truth about your life the Bible says according to 2 Corinthians 13 5 test yourself to see that you are in the faith test yourself precious saints examine the fruit of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit within your life are you a new creation? Are you born again? Have you been filled with the Spirit and with His power in this hour? Ask God what He wants you to do today to apply what He has revealed. What actions will you take, precious saints? Ask God to reveal where you are and where your family and, and, and the church is within there, whatever that community is that you are a part of, that you have fellowship with. If it's the online community, just focus on what God is doing in this hour. Allow His Spirit to move upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Have you departed from the faith? Have you walked away from everything? anything that God has called you to. Are you being disciplined? Are you being disciplined in this hour, precious saints? Are you crying out for help? Do you need to repent and return to Him today? Are you ready to be used by God and also draw other sinners to Him? That's what it says according to the Word of God. According to Psalm 51, it says that we will draw sinners to Him because we have been forgiven.
God wants to forgive us that we can also forgive others, precious saints. Lord, draw people closer to you who are afraid of your snatching away today. Oh, Heavenly Father, come and touch your people. Come and fill them with your presence and your power. Lord, that you will bring a revival in them. Lord, that they will be led by your Spirit to call together a gathering of those around them to tell them that Jesus Christ is coming back. This is the hour to preach the truth. This is the hour where the Holy Spirit is with the church that we might see revival. Oh God, send revival to the nations. Oh God, send revival to a church that is pure and holy, a remnant bride that is looking for your coming. Oh Lord, we know this is a blessed hope, but Lord, I pray that you would raise up a people that are more interested, more hungry in you than they are in the material things of this world. Lord, even as we sacrifice this food, as we sacrifice the different things that we are at this time, let us draw closer to you to know you you more deeply in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, I pray all those people that are here today, Lord, help them draw closer to You. Those that are afraid of Your snatching away so that they, Lord, would also come and be ready for Your coming as they surrender their lives to You in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, give them the heightened sense of urgency also within this hour and the work that needs to be done before Your coming. Oh Lord, I pray for mercy that revival would come to those that desire You within this hour. We want more of You within this hour. We desire for You. We are hungry and thirsty for You. We want more of You, oh Lord. Send revival to Your church. Send revival to those that desire you more today in the name of Jesus Christ. Come and touch your people. Come and fill them today in Jesus' mighty name. We pray and believe. Amen and amen. This is Pastor Robert Clancy from Narrow Path Ministries in Perth, Western Australia. It is time to catch the fire of repentance revival as we prepare for the coming of of our Lord Jesus Christ, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. And if you've liked this utterance today, we encourage you, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Rumble, follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Go to our free website, repentancerevival.com. Precious Saints, this is day three of the 21 days fasting. You can join in at any time, Precious Saints. Just press in, just fast and set aside that time and away from all those worldly interactions that will try to bring a distraction to you and your relationship with God in this hour as we press in from my family to yours. God bless you. We love you. We are praying for your precious saints. Shalom, shalom, shalom.